The Manole FinTech Fund is a hybrid uh, fintech specific hedge fund. And we own both publicly traded fintech stocks as well as we're short fintech stocks as well, also publicly traded, but we also own about a dozen private fintech securities. So when I say we benefit from your use of your Visa card or your MasterCard or your use of PayPal online, we own shares in those publicly traded companies. And so as they do better, we do better. In the payment gateway and the payment network side, those are names like Visa and MasterCard and PayPal and uh, in the private space names like Stripe. Um, And uh, we as, as a fund can own both public and private fintech securities. So when I say we benefit, we own what is very small percentage of Visa or MasterCard, but we are shareholders of that company. So as they benefit, as the company benefits, we benefit as a fund. You might think of this as a Visa card. This is actually not a Visa card. What this is, is a JP Morgan Chase line of credit. So they're the ones that are giving Warren Fisher a line of credit, whether it's five or 10 or $15,000 a month that I can go out and spend They'll send me a paper statement at the end of 30 days and hope I pay it back. Visa actually doesn't even know who I am. Visa is just the toll road that that transaction, that $100 transaction is riding on. And so they earn their 15 cents regardless of whether I pay JP Morgan back at the end of the month or not. Investing in the card issuers is just like investing in a Capital One, a Discover, a it, or a bank like J.P. Morgan City, Wells Fargo. And so they're the ones that are really taking the risk of whether or not I pay it back at the end of the month. I don't want to invest in companies that have that opaque balance sheet, that opaque risk, if you will, that cyclical risk. I like winning by breathing, I like to call it, in that I know for a fact you are going to use less cash this year than you did last year. And next year, you're going to use less cash. And as you use less cash, as you buy things, um, whether it's in a store, a physical retailer, a brick and mortar uh, retailer, or if it's online, it has to happen on one of my cards. And so as more transactions happen digitally, electronically, and on plastic and away from cash and check paper, we benefit. The vast majority of transactions here, at least in the U.S., are still done on on a card now. 30 to 35 percent of transactions still occur in cash. But then when you leave the U.S., what's really interesting is over 80 percent of purchase transactions are still done in cash. Developed countries like Japan and Germany are still very high users of cash. And... um, That is slowly starting to change. And that secular growth that I talk about are transactions that used to happen in cash that are now happening on a card. And here in the U.S., we're seeing it all the time. It used to be if you were driving over um, a bridge or through a tunnel, you would stop and, and give the attendant some cash. Now it's all automated. If you park in a big city, you use your phone and an app and you go, I'm going to take parking spot one, two, three, four, five on an app, you can pay for it on a car and you don't have to carry around quarters and constantly worry about loading up, you know, that little parking, you know, meter. So more and more transactions, if you take the subway, um, it used to be tokens, then it became Metro cards. And now it's simply putting your phone within three to six inches of the terminal, the turnstile and you walk right in. And so as more things become digital and electronic in terms of payments, our companies benefit.